Spinos SAQ73, Neuraxial Anesthesia for Caesarean Section. A. Which dermatomes should be blocked prior to an elective caesarean section? And how may the adequacy of the block be tested? The levels written here are commonly but not universally accepted. For sensory block, upper level T4 bilaterally to cold, tested with either ethyl chloride spray or ice, demonstrate sensation on unblocked skin, then spray on blocked skin moving in a cephalate direction until cold sensation is perceived, and repeat on the contralateral side. Upper level T5 bilaterally to light touch, Testing as above with cotton wool or touch of spray on the skin, published research has suggested that a block to light touch at T5 is the most reliable indicator of a pain-free caesarean section. Hence, a block to touch at T5 is often quoted as a medical legal standard. Upper level T5 bilaterally to pain. Testing as above with neural tip. Lower level S5 bilaterally. Check the lower extent of block to cold or light touch. Can check S2 at the sole of foot. Lack of awareness of urinary catheter insertion indicates loss of touch sensation at the sacral level. For motor block, rheumatoid 2, unable to flex knees or tree, unable to move legs or feet is required. B. How might an initially inadequate block be improved sufficiently to allow surgery to proceed? Positioning. Flex hips to flatten the lumbar lordosis. Caution head down tilt or lateral tilt if the block is inadequate on one side. Remember the need to avoid aortocaval compression. For epidural, if using epidural or CSE, top up the epidural. If no detectable block, despite at least 10 ml of 0.5% bupivacin or equivalent, check the catheter and connections. Consider reciting the epidural. Consider spinal. If unable to inject LA, check the catheter and its connections. If using spinal only, consider inserting an epidural in order to raise the height of the block. If a partial but inadequate block has developed, the epidural may be recited or withdrawn slightly. Be very cautious about converting a partially functional epidural anesthetic to a spinal anesthetic. Aggressive control of the spread of hyperbaric LA is needed to prevent a high or total spinal. This is done by positioning the head up initially, then slowly lowering the head to achieve the required level of block. If unilateral block, consider top up in lateral position with a painful side down. Use dilute large volume LA and opiate. Second option is to withdraw the catheter 2 to 3 cm and give a further top up. Third option is to recite the epidural. If missed segment, consider topping up with opioid. Intratical mode of action will minimize segmental effects. Continue as per unilateral block. If the toxic limit for the LA agent has been reached, elective procedures can be abandoned, but for urgent procedures, a GA or spinal anesthetic will be required. For spinal anesthesia, if no spinal block develops, a repeat spinal may be performed. Consider reducing overall dose if some block is present. Good attention to patient positioning should help prevent a high spinal. C. How could you manage a patient who complains of pain during a caesarean section under spinal anesthesia? First is communication. Ask the obstetrician to stop surgery while establishing pain control. This depends on the stage of surgery and may not be feasible after uterine incision and before delivery of baby. Ask the obstetrician to handle tissues as carefully as possible, avoiding exteriorization of the uterus, large paracolic gutter packs, etc. Ask the woman to describe the sensations felt. Determine whether it is true sharp pain or the normal tugging sensations that are to be expected. Identify the likely cause of pain, such as inadequately blocked sacral nerve roots and peritoneal pain. Reassurance often helps, but even if they are normal sensations. If the woman remains distressed, then it should be addressed in the same manner as true pain. Try to give the mother a realistic expectation of continued duration and severity of pain. Options for pain relief includes repeating the spinal. If surgeons have only started skin incision, consider covering the wound, turning the patient on their side and repeating the spinal. Other options for pain relief includes antonox, 
alfentanil, ketamine, LA infiltration, and GA. Regarding alfentanil, 50 micrograms aliquots IV, give oxygen and request the presence of pediatrician if before delivery and inform them that opioids have been given. Morphine may then be given after delivery. Ketamine, 5 to 10 mg boluses if familiar with its use. LA infiltration by surgeons if baby delivered and starting to close. Care not to exceed LA toxic dose. GA must be offered regardless of stage of surgery if the woman remains uncomfortable. If the pain has occurred before the delivery of the fetus, it is very likely that a GA will be required. If the patient requests GA, in all but exceptional circumstances, comply. If the anesthetist feels the severity of pain is not acceptable, persuade the patient that a GA is required. Postoperatively, document the women's experiences, stage of surgery and action undertaken, including offers of options that the woman may have declined. Ensure adequate post-op analgesia if the block has failed, such as sufficient opioids and tap blocks. Debrief the woman postoperatively once pain is controlled, after returning to work, and consultant involvement if necessary. Offer anesthetic clinic appointment after discharge if the patient would like further conversations. Comment 45.7% pass rate Most candidates knew the dermatome levels and how to test the level of the block. However, section B was less well answered. Anesthesia to light touch is more reliable at predicting the adequacy of block than loss of cold sensation. Document the level of block obtained and the adequacy of perioperative analgesia. Some candidates did not read the question carefully enough or appreciated that they were required to improve the block itself rather than provide supplementary analgesia. It was good to see that many candidates understood the importance of patient reassurance and how to manage pain during caesarean section under spinal anesthesia. The possibility of complications of central neuraxial block must be mentioned to the patient including the risk of intraoperative discomfort and its management. Document all complications that are discussed. Every patient should be warned of the possibility of intraoperative discomfort. This should be documented. Pain during CNB remains a leading obstetric anesthetic cause of maternal litigation. Of attempted CNB anesthetics for caesarean section, 1-5% to are inadequate for surgery. The majority should be identified before the operation starts. Additional Q&A September 2016 FRCA The answer for question A is similar to answers as in A. Question B Describe the actions you would take if your spinal block proves inadequate on testing prior to starting surgery for an elective category 4 caesarean section. Actions include Improve current block if close to adequate block on assessment via positioning Flex the hips to flatten the lumbar lordosis. Consider cautious head down tilt. Tilt to sub-optimal side and remember the need to avoid aortocaval compression. Ensure that adequate time has been allowed for block development. Second option is further regional technique, such as repeat spinal and epidural. For repeat spinal, consider reducing overall dose if some block is present. Good attention to patient positioning helps to prevent high spinal. For epidural anesthesia, height of spinal block may be elevated by epidural injection. Epidural component itself also provides anesthesia. Third option is general anesthesia if the patient does not want to consider further regional technique and there are no compelling contraindications to GA. C. What are the early signs and symptoms of a spinal block that has ascended too high? Symptoms include difficulty breathing or taking a deep breath. Difficulty speaking, nasal stuffiness, nausea and vomiting, anxiety, feeling faint, tingling and weakness of hands and arms. Signs include decreased respiratory effort, reduced oxygen saturations, weak cough, cardiovascular instability with bradycardia and hypotension, objective weakness of the hands, then arms, then shoulders, and high block on retesting, sedation, Apnea and loss of consciousness with fixed dilated pupils if total spinal blockade. Comments Total spinals are the commonest cause of maternal cardiac arrest in UK delivery suites. The incidence of unexpectedly high blocks or total spinal 
is variously reported to be between 1 in 100 and 1 in 100,000 central neuraxial blocks, depending on definition. Treatment is as for hypotension, plus tracheal intubation and IPPV. Recovery is complete if BP and oxygenation are maintained. The answer for question D is as in C in the previous question. What are the advantages of central neuraxial blocks in caesarean sections? This includes both mother and partner can be present at the delivery, minimal risk of aspiration and lower risk of anaphylaxis, the neonate is more alert, promoting early bonding and breastfeeding, fewer drugs are administered with less hangover than after GA, post-operative analgesia is better with early mobilization. Classify the urgency of caesarean sections and discuss their mode of anesthesia. Category 1 caesarean section Maternal or fetal compromise with immediate threat to life to the mother or fetus. Aim to deliver the fetus as quickly as possible while not compromising maternal safety. While it is the obstetrician's responsibility to call the urgency of the caesarean section, it is the anesthetist's responsibility to choose a method of anesthesia that is safe while in many centers, GA is common for Category 1 caesarean section, CNB anesthesia is a valid alternative. Do not be pressured into choosing a form of anesthesia that is inappropriate for the mother. Category 2 caesarean section, maternal or fetal compromise that is not immediately life-threatening. Category 3, no maternal or fetal compromise but requires early delivery. Category 4, no maternal or fetal compromise, delivery is time to suit the mother and maternity services. Category 2 to 4 caesarean sections are usually performed under CNB anesthesia. Three principal techniques for CNB includes epidural anesthesia, spinal anesthesia, and CSE. Classification of urgency should be continuously reviewed. Epidural anesthesia indications includes women with a functioning epidural for labor anesthesia, or some specific maternal diseases where rapid changes in SVR might be problematic, such as in some cardiac diseases, although commonly these individuals will have a careful CSE. Advantages include a functioning labor epidural is easy to top up, more stable BP than spinal, intraoperative top up is possible, and epidural can provide post op analgesia. Disadvantages slow onset. Large doses of LA may cause toxicity and poorer quality of blood than spinal anesthesia. Spinal anesthesia is the next option. It is the most popular technique for elective CS, although in some centers CSE is preferred. Advantages include quick onset, good quality analgesia, easy to perform, and use of opioids provide post-op analgesia. Disadvantages include limited duration of action, inadequate analgesia is difficult to correct, and rapid changes in BP and cardiac output. The speed of onset of sympathectomy that occurs with spinal anesthesia results in a greater fall in maternal cardiac output and BP and may be associated with a more acidotic neonate at delivery. The third option is CSE. Indications includes to limit the speed of onset of a block. Where there is concern about the speed of onset of a block, CSE approach can be used injecting only a small dose of intratecal LA and extending the block if required using the epidural catheter. Next indication is expectation of a prolonged surgery and ability to use the epidural catheter for post-op analgesia. Advantages include quick onset, good quality analgesia, intraoperative top-up is possible, and epidural can be used postoperatively. If the spinal block is inadequate, injecting LA or 10 mL of normal saline through the epidural catheter are viable options. Normal saline works by compressing the dural sac, causing cephalate spread of the intratecal LA. Disadvantages of CSE include rapid changes in BP and cardiac output, technically more difficult, higher failure rate of the spinal, especially if needle through needle technique is used, untested epidural catheter. Epidural catheter may be inadvertently intratecal. Be prepared to deal with the consequences of an intratecal injection. There is risk of damaging the epidural catheter with the spinal needle if the two injection technique is used. Although the incidence of major complications of CNB 
as identified by the third national audit project of the RCOA was higher with a CSE technique. The numbers were very small, two or four patients depending on whether an optimistic or pessimistic analysis was used, and the study cautions against over-interpretation of these results. These are my references. Thank you.